So today I'm going to talk about some of the fundamental particles in physics. So this is a sort of a start off to the unit one material on particles and quantum phenomena and that sort of thing. So the first thing we should talk about are the fundamental particles. What are they? So the first type of uh, fundamental particles are your leptons and I'll go into a little bit more detail about what those are. So they're a type of fundamental particle. And you also have your quarks in there. So those are your building blocks for various different things like protons and neutrons. Again, I'm going to look at these in a little bit more detail later in this video, but it's just important you know what they are. Now, these leptons and quarks are sometimes known as fermions. Okay, and there's another category of thing called bosons, and this is actually as far as you actually need to know for the AAS spec. But I'm just going to go into it in a little more detail because it's interesting and those of you who are interested in that type of thing might want a bit of clues to what to go away and look at. So um, fermions first of all. So if you have a lepton by itself or a quark by itself it is a fermion. The complicated bit comes when you start having things made of multiple quarks, say like protons or mesons and that type of thing, because then they can switch between being fermions and bosons, which can get quite confusing, which is why I think it's not on the AS spec. So any of the, any of the leptons are fermions, and a quark by itself or an odd number of quarks will be a fermion. If there's an even number of quarks, that will make it a boson. And I'll, ex I'll just explain why. Okay, so the thing to know about, to give you some ideas of things to go away and look at, a fermion is something that abides by what's called a uh, Fermi-Dirac statistics. And basically these are two pretty famous particle physicists who worked on this, so hence why it's named after them. And it's basically a set of rules which govern whether something's a fermion or a boson. And fermions are actually named after the scientist Fermi, as you may have guessed. And the second thing is that fermions obey what's called the Pauli exclusion principles. Again, I'm not going to go into too much detail on this because these are just giving you ideas of things you go go away and look at to extend your knowledge of this. But those are the two things you need for um, those. Now, bosons are a bit uh, interesting. They're what's called the force carriers. Now, what do I mean by that? I think a useful video to look at um, when you're trying to understand this is to go away and look at my video on the types of interaction because bosons are basically the force carriers in your types of interaction. So there's a, there's a type of boson for the weak force, there's a type of boson for the strong force, and that sort of thing. So I'll get onto that sort of when I was looking at interactions. And the other thing sort of little thing to snip it to go away and look at is these bosons are named after a scientist called Bose and they abide by the Bose-Einstein uh, statistics instead of the Fermi-Dirac ones. So that's basically the key distinction. So I'll just draw a line across there so you can see clearly that those two things are separate. And the reason this isn't on your spec is obviously it can get quite complicated when you have multiple quarks in what's called a composite particle or made of lots of parks. Parks? Quarks. So I'm not going to go into any detail and that's why it's not on the air spec, but though for those of you who are interested. So let's have a look at the types of leptons. As I said, I'd go into it in more detail. So the three classes of leptons, you've got your tau part leptons, you've got your muon leptons, and you've got your electron leptons. Now, writing all that is rather time consuming and obviously when we start using the equations things, that's quite irritating. So there are various symbols to use for these. So a tau, we give the Greek symbol tau. Now, key distinction, this is not a T. You can see the top here is wiggly. That's what makes it a tau rather than a T. And it's important to draw it like that so you don't get it mixed up. You have a muon, which is given the symbol of mu. Funnily enough, and you have your electron, which is given the symbol E. Now, the standard particle for all of these is a minus sign, and this is important when we move on to look at antiparticles and that sort of thing, because each of these have a particle with the opposite charge. 
but the standard tau lepton is T tau minus, muon is mu minus, and then electron is E minus. So those are three types of leptons. But you also can get lepton neutrinos, okay? So your leptons are your tau, your mu, and your electron types. But you also get neutrinos, and those we give the symbol V purely because the N has already been stolen by neutrons, so we had to come up with another symbol for it. And there are three types of those, so there's your tau type, there's your mu type, and then there is your electron neutrino type. Now, in the AS specification, you basically see no mention of the tau whatsoever, because they don't really come up in too many things, so they're not that important. But I've just put them in there so you have a complete picture of it. These two other ones you will come across quite a bit, the muons and the electrons and the various neutrinos that go with them, because they they play a part in quite a few decay sequences and that sort of thing. Another side note is actually, as you go down from tau towards the electron, uh, that's actually your decreasing the rest mass. So the charge for all of these is obviously the same, it's all minus, but you're actually decreasing mass as you go from tau to muon to electron. And that's just a little piece of information that could be quite useful about leptons. Okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit about quarks. Now, I'm not quite sure why they've done this, but they, there's actually only, you only need to know about some of the quarks for the AS specification and not others, but I want, again, just like with the leptons, I want to give you a complete picture, but make it really clear which ones you need to know about and which are just for interest. So the ones you need to know about are your up, your down, and your strange quarks. Now, in the formula sheets, they give you all the data about them, so I'm not going to go into that. But those are the three you need to know about. And you'd need to know, for instance, that protons made of two ups and a down, and that neutrons made of two downs and an up, and that sort of thing. Those are the important things you need to know, but I'll take a little bit more detailed look at that when I actually look at types of what, what's called hadrons later on. Now, there's three that are not on the AS specification. And they're your charm quark, your top quark, and your bottom quark. I'm not entirely sure why they're not on there, to be honest. They're not any more complicated, but you don't tend to come across those ones so much, and they don't play such an important role, which is maybe why they've been skipped out. And they are, these are actually sort of paired up. So up and down are paired up. Your strange and charm are paired up and the top and bottom are paired up, and I'll explain why that's important in a second. So, you, like I said, you've got them paired up, and I've put them, I've lined them up like this, and these ones here are sometimes known as the top type quarks, and these are sometimes known as the bottom type quarks, it's a bit confusing seeing as there is a top and a bottom type, but you know, as science and physics go. So, important things to know is the up and down quarks are your smallest quarks, and they're also the most stable. Okay, so that's applying to those ones there. So, what you can look at is, is the other types of quark will actually decay into your up and down quarks, so that's something that can happen. So the reason we don't talk too much about these other four quarks here is that they only really occur when you have a high speed collisions or maybe you're talking about uh, cosmic rays and that sort of thing. So that's why we don't talk about those too much. Whereas the up and down quarks we'll come across quite a lot because they're the building blocks of what we used to think were fundamental particles, but what are now we know, in fact, are not. So those are your types of quarks. And as I said earlier, you can actually put these different quarks together to make what's known as composites. And if there are two quarks, or four quarks, or six quarks, or any even number of quarks in your composite, that actually makes it a boson. But if there's an odd number, so there's one, three, five, seven, like in protons there's three, in neutrons there's three, that makes it a fermion. 
And I think, well, as I said earlier, though those two things aren't on specification simply because it starts to get quite confusing and that you don't really need to know about all the Bose, uh, Einstein and the Fermi Dirac sort of things. Those, those are getting really complicated. But like I said, I just want to give you a bit of a glimmer as to what sort of things you're going to be, you can go on to look at if you're a bit more interested in this and want to do your own research.